This past week, I came across the article, The Dangers of Fluent Lectures, in uh, the Inside uh, Higher Ed um, newsletter. And uh, this caught my attention. But actually, more importantly, um, this notion that a research project was done that showed that students can be lulled into thinking that a good lecture and the passive experience of that good lecture is helping them to learn when um, data shows that active learning will help them to learn better, even though they're not comfortable with active learning. This was quite an interesting uh, post, and like I normally do, I did a quick scan, read through the post, and very quickly went to the actual study. Um, I like to go to the primary sources. Um, in a nutshell, I want to talk about the study, and I think this is important. And this was done at Harvard in a physics classroom. And uh, there were uh, two groups of students. One group of student was lectured to. They were given traditional problems. Um, and the uh, high-quality lecturer went through the problems, provided the solutions, provided the problems. And um, the students... Uh, then recorded how they felt about the lecture, and then they were tested on the results. Another group at um, using the exact same content, another group of students, were given the problems to solve first. And they then struggled through the problems or worked through the problems. And then they were uh, given the opportunity to take a look at the solutions. And they had a bit of a follow-up lecture. But they experienced the challenge of working through the problems first to get a sense of where they're at. The second group felt quite uncomfortable with their learning experience. They felt that you know, their feelings of learning, their FOL, was significantly lower but yet, when they were tested, their test scores were significantly higher than the students who simply received the lecture. Interesting. Interesting. So, you've got a group of students who believe that they're learning more through a passive lecture. Another group of students who believe they're learning less by having to struggle through working through their problems. And yet the test scores show the students who are sitting through the passive lecture are not learning more, yet they're feeling better. Whereas the students who are working through the problems are not feeling good about it and worried about their learning experience. I think they, they're thinking they're learning less and yet they're scoring better. This is a foundational problem that we have in our learning environments and, and, and there's several reasons why I believe this is the case. And, you know, I, I'm going to provide the article here. As you can see from this graph here, with the test of learning, the students in the active learning environment had higher scores, significantly higher scores, not just a, a small amount, but this is significant in terms of the data. Um, than their students who receive the, the lecture. And yet, look at the enjoyment different, difference. The students, you know, who are comfortable with the lecture felt they learned more. Um, yes, and here's, you know, not only did they feel or enjoy the lecture or enjoy the experience, they actually felt they learned a great deal from it, and yet they didn't. Um, they felt that the instructor was effective at teaching them, um, and then this is, this is really, really telling. They wish all my physics courses were taught the same way. So in the active learning environment, it's significantly lower and significantly less. And yet, this gave the students the highest scores. Why? Why is this the case? Well, um, you, if you only have a few minutes, you can read through this summary. It points to a few ideas, which I'm going to talk about. Um, and it, there is one quotation here I think that is really important that I want to touch on before I actually go to the primary source, because this is what I do. I go to primary sources and take a look at what the data really says. But this is really at the essence of why this is a case. Our higher educational system, actually our K-12 system, is designed this way. We put students into an environment where we lecture at them, ask them to regurgitate information. It's difficult to change from that environment. Students aren't comfortable with doing something other than what they've been conditioned to doing, whether it is in K-12 or in higher ed, and especially in higher ed, in, in undergraduate studies. So this is a key factor. Now, there's other factors, and I think it's important that we go to the actual data 
from the study to take a look at what the data says and also I think the recommendations of what the authors are pointing to in terms of how do we deal with this. So I'm, I'm pointing to the uh, title of the report or the journal and the title of the article and I'm, I'm going to jump into a PDF of the article to go into specifics but I'll, I'll make this link available. I believe this article was available for free which is great. Um, it's wonderful that they make stuff like this available. So let's let's take a look at the actual article and see what it has to say. So I I went through the methodology and I kind of explained what they did. I, they did it quite rigorously. They they did it quite fairly. Um, the the numbers weren't as significant as some people might like, but that's okay. But the key aspect that I was looking at was the discussion or the results or the summary of. Um, why things were the way that things were. And so I want to address a few things that the authors identified as, as key issues that I think are going to be important to our conversation and really important um, as we go forward and look at applying these ideas. So why is there this negative correlation between students' feelings of learning and their actual test of learning? Well, the authors point to two specific factors and then add a third one which I think are quite relevant and and they're right here. The the first factor is this notion of cognitive fluency of the lectures. And and this is this idea that the students are used to the way that lectures work. It's something they're comfortable with. And if you have a good lecturer, it seems like this is working. This is what you know. This is the environment. I know how the system works. So there's this notion of cognitive fluency. It's what you're accustomed to. The other idea that I think is equally important or very important um, is that unless you've spent enough time working in active learning environments um, or unless you've become a really sophisticated and independent learner, learners who really don't understand how learning work have a poor metacognitive understanding of what's involved in learning. Since most people are only familiar with being lectured to and then, and then regurgitating information on an exam, having to struggle through the actual problems makes a lot of students feel that they're not learning. And yet, that is what learning is. Learning is part of that struggle. It's that um, that challenge. It's working through a challenge and dealing with problems and resolving those challenges. That's actual learning. So the authors refer to these people as novices, novice learners, because they haven't become sophisticated in their understanding of active and dynamic learning. The third point I think that is equally important is that, um, and, and this is extremely important, and, and this is that this type of an environment in an undergraduate program is not the norm. So the author suggests that students are unfamiliar with intense active learning, and yet this really isn't intense active learning. It was just having students do the problem. But this environment of having to work through problems is something a lot of students aren't accustomed to in higher ed, nor are they accustomed to it in K-12, to um, and, and especially in high school, because high school prepares students for college. And so, you know, it, you, they're preparing students to write a, a, a myriad of exams, and so you've got that traditional model. So this notion of the cognitive struggle of an active learning environment is just something students aren't accustomed to um, having. And this is the key thing. These are key factors that contribute to the students' feelings of learning being um, incorrect it, when they compared to the test of learning or their feelings of learning with active learning are much lower than they are with the passive learning simply because that's what they're used to. Here is the problem. If we create these passive learning environments where students are only exposed to recipe regurgitation they're being lectured at or they're given all the steps, all the form, all the points of the formula to fill out or when they're doing science they're being taught about science as opposed to struggling through the actual labs and struggling through the challenges of, of inquiry-based learning or whether it's other areas like um, in social studies or civics where they have to actually come up with ideas and struggle and explore. The struggle of learning, unless we expose to, to that in a significant learning environment, we're not preparing them for actually doing well. That is the key. Let's take a look at some of the other recommendations that these authors have. So here's some of the recommendations that the authors have, and I'm going to just share them, and then I'll talk about some of the recommendations that I have. So one of the key things that they point to is that success of active learning really depends upon students' motivation and engagement. And in order to have students motivated and engaged in active learning, they need to know that 
the benefits of struggle is part of the process, and that is what learning is all about. This means exposing students to the notion of the growth mindset, about critical and analytical thinking, about challenges, about feeling forward, about errors. This is crucial. If you don't create an environment where you promote these types of ideas, then students will not be able to deal well with active learning. Similarly, Areas like the group work and things like that, other aspects of engagements where you bring learners together to do the inquiry-based discovery, to explore these types of things. Students need to be introduced to them very, very early. You've got to create an environment where this becomes an accepted way of communication, collaboration, and students once they start to realize that they're learning much more effectively and they're seeing positive results and they're finding that their peers can actually help them um, and not hinder them, then they start to recognize what true and effective active learning looks like. Another recommendation the authors have is that you want to start taking a look at alternative assessments. Just running a traditional standardized test really isn't going to be beneficial to the learners, especially when you're dealing with, with active learning. You have to look at things like formative feedback, formative assessment, and you need to get students to recognize that they need to start to self-assess themselves, right? So formative feedback, encouragement, having them explore, confirm certain things, doing little things like one minute papers, the muddy moment, identifying aha moments. These are all little methodologies uh, and there's many, many more that are part of the active learning process where learners recognize that part of the challenge, part of the struggle, the failure is part of the learning process. So getting them to recognize that the discomfort of learning that they're feeling is actually a confirmation that they are learning. That's part of the learning process. Now, the final factors or the summation and this concluding paragraph here of this particular article points to some really important things and it's sort of reiteration of several of the ideas that, you know, the authors have actually talked about. And again, it, it's this notion of preparing the students and coaching them early in the semester to recognize that the struggle that comes with active learning is really part of the learning process. Without that preparation, the authors argue, learners will not be able to deal with the negative impact that they're normally feeling. The other thing the authors do point to earlier on is that um, it's really important in a peer environment that if you have students who are going to be negative and, and call into question what is happening, those peer influences can really hinder the environment. So you have to really take a look at that whole learning environment to make sure you're addressing all those types of things. Um, and again, the superstar lecturer who is smooth and fluent and really puts on a wonderful show may make the student feel like they're learning, but the reality is they're not. So the reality is learning is a struggle. Learning is part of the challenge. Learning is part of discovery. Learning involves failing. And um, it's really important that we create that learning environment where we help the learner become that lifelong learner. The person who takes the notion of inquiry and is willing to explore, is willing to experiment, and is willing to test things out, willing to make some errors and to fail, and then to struggle through those failures to be able to do uh, much more down the road. Active learning, as we're seeing from this particular study, which the authors and other authors who've commented on this in the previous article I pointed to, would argue that can be generalized to many other disciplines because of the way this was constructed. Active learning can be highly effective and actually more effective in terms of achievement if the learners recognize how important it is and if they embrace it and if they work with it. So if you want to actually make active learning effective, you have to create that learning environment where all the factors come into play. You have to condition your learner to recognize that the struggle of learning, the struggle of dealing with a problem, the failure that comes with dealing with these problems, whether they're word problems or other scenarios, all the challenges challenges, the ups and downs, failing forward, that is learning. That's the learning process. So if you can build that into your learning environment, expose students to that early, get them to recognize that to become effective lifelong learners, they need to self-regulate. They need to be able to deal with these challenges and through their own testing and verification process, 
whether it's done through uh, confirmation through videos or through looking at a textbook or something like that, they start to evaluate their own learning and they can see that their problem solving skills are improving. This goes an enormous way to helping them feel comfortable and to have the proper motivation and the proper attitude that helps them be successful in this type of an active learning environment. So the key is creating this learning environment. And as we've argued here on this channel and, and through the work we've been doing, you've got to create that significant learning environment where you give the students choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning opportunities. Now, the authentic learning opportunities can help to present those challenges. And when a student really takes ownership and they struggle through those challenges and they find their voice when they're sharing their results, it makes all the difference in the world. So you can prepare the student for the test and get a high achievement through active learning, but you also can prepare a student for life. And you want to prepare them for both. Ideally, you want to prepare them for life.